Hi guys, let's read the ethics section of the June 2020 Vision IS Current Affairs. So the first topic is ethics of clinical trials. So why was this in the news? Recently, Indian Council of Medical Research, ICMR, announced that two indigenous vaccine candidates will enter clinical trials in the month of July. Now let's come to the introduction. Clinical trials are research studies performed in people that are aimed at evaluating a medical, surgical, or behavioral intervention. Clinical trials are essential in development of medicines. Without trials, the efficacy, safety, and optimal use of medicines will be very difficult to determine. Ethics in clinical research focuses largely on identifying and implementing the acceptable conditions for exposure of some individuals to risk and burdens for the benefit of society at large. Thus, it becomes especially important that patients who are involved in clinical trials are not used as a means to an end. What are the rights of research participants? Free informed consent, access to information, confidentiality with respect to identity, special consideration to vulnerable population, post-trial access to remedy. Now let's come to evolution of global ethical standards in clinical trials. Ethical guidelines for clinical research were formulated only after discovery of inhumane behavior with participants during research experiments. For instance, several inhuman experiments were conducted by Nazi Germany on Jews in concentration camps during World War II. The discovery of these experiments led to formulation of Nuremberg Code in Germany to prevent recurrence of such episodes. With increasing research all over, World Health Organization formulated guidelines in the form of Declaration of Helsinki in 1964. It was adopted at 18th WMA General Assembly. It has been revised five times and the latest version was published in 2000. With the increased interest or far with the increased interest of pharmaceutical industries in carrying out research experiments in the developing and the underdeveloped countries. In 1982, the Council of International Organizations of Medical Sciences CIOMS, in association with World Health Organization, developed international ethical guidelines for biomedical research involving human subjects. The Indian Council of Medical Research has laid down the ethical guidelines for biomedical research on human subjects in the year 2000, which were revised in 2006. It gives 12 general principles to be followed by all biomedical researchers working in the country. Now let's come to the 12 medical principles of clinical trials as highlighted by ICMR. The first one is principle of essentiality. Research should be essential for the advancement of knowledge that benefits patients, doctors and all others including the planet. Principles of voluntariness, informed consent and community agreement. Research participants should be aware of the nature of research and the probable consequences of the experiments. Principle of non-exploitation. 
Research protocols should include provisions of compensation for the human participants to cover all foreseeable and hidden risk. Number four, principle of privacy and confidentiality. Data acquired for research purpose should be kept confidential. Principle of precaution and risk minimization. To prevent research participant from any harm and adverse events. Principle of professional competence. Clinical research should be carried out only by competent and qualified persons in their respective fields. Number seven, principle of accountability and transparency. The researcher should conduct experiments in fair, honest, impartial and transparent manner after full disclosure of his or her interest in research. Number eight, principle of the maximization of the public interest and of distributive justice. The results of the research should be used for benefit of all humans and not only to those who are socially better off. Number nine, principle of institutional arrangements. All institutional arrangements required to be made in respect of the research and its subsequent use or applications should be duly made in transparent manner. Number 10. Principle of Public Domain The results of any research work done should be made public. Now let's come to 11th. Principle of totality of responsibility. All those directly or indirectly connected with the research should take the professional and moral responsibility for the due observance of all the principles, guidelines or prescriptions laid down in respect of the research. Number 12. Principle of Compliance. All those associated with the research work should comply by the guidelines pertaining to the specific area of the research. What are the persistent challenges? The first challenge is disproportionate participation of poor people. In developing countries like India, most of the research participants are uneducated and economically backward. There have been instances of exploitation of vulnerable sections for clinical data. Lack of enforceability. Ethical guidelines in India are of recommendatory nature and do not have the force of law. Absence of specialized training. Doctors are specially trained to be good clinicians but are seldom taught even the fundamentals of ethical clinical research. Disproportionate burden on developing countries. Pharmaceutical companies from developed countries collect the clinical data for their new and experimental drugs from the population in the less developed countries. Most of these drugs are never used in the communities from where the experimental data are collected. Phase Participants Purpose Phase 1 Small number of participants, generally 20 to 80. The purpose would be to evaluate safety, identify side effects and determine a safe dose range. Phase 2 Large number of participants, generally in hundreds, to further evaluate safety and assess its efficacy. Phase 3. Larger number of participants than phase 2, generally in thousands.
to further evaluate its effectiveness and determine whether the agent should be approved and marketed. Phase 4. Various Populations To collect additional information after the agent has been approved and marketed, usually for a long period of time. How COVID-19 has generated a new challenge In a desperate bid to contain the highly infectious virus, which is spreading at an alarming rate, medical researchers are experimenting with multiple vaccine candidates. For instance, the Drugs Controller General of India, the CGI, has permitted two vaccines, including Zykov D, which has already been tolerated well in the preclinical trials. But this urgent need for a vaccine has created some apprehensions. Starting Phase 2 and Phase 3 trials simultaneously could considerably increase the risk associated with side effects. As Phase 2 acts as a safety check before Phase 3 trials. Also, the pandemic is negatively impacting the clinical trials of non-COVID vaccines. Way Forward Training of doctors in the elements of ethical clinical research Providing legal backing to ethical guidelines Investigators and research teams must be offered fair reimbursement Benefits and risk to be wider. Okay, benefits, benefits and risk to the wider community should be taken into account as well. For instance, relatives have a right to know about genetic abnormalities identified in a patient. Adequate information about the research should be given in a simple and easily understandable vernacular language. In essence, clinical trials should be conducted only if the researcher knows they are the right person for the task, that the question is worth addressing and the study will provide a valid answer. So that's all guys. See you in my next video. Bye.